వెల్కమ్ టు ఈపీజీ పాఠశాల ఐ ఆమ్ ప్రొఫెసర్ ఈ శివనాగిరెడ్డి ఫార్మర్ డైరెక్టర్ నేషనల్ ఇన్స్టిట్యూట్ ఆఫ్ టూరిజం అండ్ హాస్పిటాలిటీ మేనేజ్మెంట్ హైదరాబాద్ కరెంట్లీ వర్కింగ్ యాజ్ సిఇఓ ది కల్చరల్ సెంటర్ ఆఫ్ విజయవాడ ఇన్ దిస్ మోడ్యూల్ వీ డిస్కస్ ట్రావెల్ మోటివేషన్స్ పర్టైనింగ్ టు ద పేపర్ టూరిజం ఇన్ ఇండియా you all know that what uh, motivates people to take up certain decisions which result into actions every um, man has his own triggering factors which ultimately culminates into actions in the same way in tourism we also have certain motivations that uh, push the tourist to take a decision whether to visit a nature based destination or to visit a heritage site or to visit a zoo what not so these are the parameters now we will discuss about uh, travel motivations in this module in detail and uh, the learning objectives of this module include to know the meaning of travel motivation to know different motivation theories and again to emphasize the importance of motivation theories in tourism the impact of motivation on travel and tourism industry as i said earlier a travel motivation is the psychological need of a person to participate in travel activities need will directly promote the travel motivation if you have a motivation the process of travel begins and otherwise it will never begins you just uh, refrain yourself and stay back in your home only and uh, that motivation really pushes you triggers the factor why can't you move out and then where to move out you will take a decision and that decision will finally lead you a destination that is what we call the entire process of tourism system the formation of a travel motivation to the occurrence of an actual travel action is a complex one why it is called as complex one is it cannot be explained in simple term so that many academicians have come forward and uh, took up researches visited places collected data finally they analyzed uh, the data and uh, proposed three or four models these models are known and called after the academicians those we will discuss in succeeding uh, uh, slides travel motivation get out of his usual environment who get out of his that is the tourist usual environment for a temporary period to get refreshed and energized here i will also say why week long he will work either in a factory or in an office or in his own uh, um, family run business etc what happens is he gets bored of his own repeatedly doing the same monotonous work his mind sometimes wants a relief from the boredom and he also the his physic also needs some refreshment so these two things will happen when you move out of the place where you get boredom so this is the way um, the emphasis on refreshed and energized it started from ancient humans who were nomadic in nature people were nomadic during the prehistoric times because they do not have built houses they used to live in caves and caverns and uh, moved out of uh, uh, the places to gather food by hunting and uh, other means so he was moving from one place to another place and uh, coming across different um, areas zones vegetation flora fauna etc so hence uh the ancient man was called as a nomadic up to the iron age period during the iron age period he settled down himself so from there onwards he led a settled life the base for modern tourism is the desire of human to travel to move out to see places to get new experience 
to interact with new people this is what we call a desire we also say that this is a demand from one's own inner urge this urge will result into taking a decision to travel to new places now people travel for leisure recreation relaxation such many more activities where they are offered this is all about understanding what travel motivation is let us now discuss a little bit about need as a travel motivation need everybody has different needs for different purposes so in travel and tourism man also has a need to travel that is explained here the general issue of understanding consumer needs falls within the area of the psychology of tourist behavior what tourist behavior sometimes tourists will go to spiritual areas just they uh, forget themselves in meditation or um, um, listening to a spiritual guru etc that is only one type of tourist but there are other types of tourists they want their own preferential places to visit in this concept the psychology is very 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 important factor to play uh, while taking a decision then the psychology of tourist behavior is concerned with uh, the following what are they what motivate tourists this is a wonderful question and you can pick up answers from the same question and you can go on explaining the whole module yourself my dear students then how they make travel decisions travel decision is not easy i want to uh, to go to taj mahal monument and uh, my wife i am giving as an example she wants to go to manasarovar my children no we want to visit uti and kodai canal you see within our own family it is a very small family but three types of decisions are taken and uh, how to take a unilateral decision that is very very important and uh, it is called as the process of tourism decision now what do the tourists think of the products they buy yes i go to tirupati what uh, what is that i am going to buy i want to buy the blessings of lord balaji how to buy nothing to pay except your travel expenses and accommodation charges local food but you are not paying any ticket for entry unless until until you want a special darshan in other areas i can give one more example if you go to a resort it is very costly affair you have to get an entry ticket and you also get each and every place further tickets to be purchased so whole lot of the package includes huge expenses which needs disposable money so here what do the tourists think of the products that they buy means different people according to their preferences buy according to the availability of funds and disposable time hence forth varieties of tourism farms emerged this is very important to understand how much they enjoy and learn during their holiday trip some people go to some places they go only for fishing they go to lakes just fishing and come back take uh, rest in the rooms again tomorrow morning he will go for fishing on the other hand some people go to jungle why why do they go to jungle just to enjoy the biodiversity not only that they also want um, they want to Now observe the behavior of the birds so we call it as bird watch so similarly the enjoyment uh, depends upon the desire upon the liking of a destination upon the liking of the activities that they are available and uh, the experience that we get new experience so visiting a temple for 10 times you get the same experience but uh, visiting new 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 places for nine times you get all together a different experience that we can uh, gauge after 
travel writing by the tourists. How do they interact with the local people? Yes, we have to interact with the local people. Simply keeping quiet, we go sightseeing and come back doesn't mean you enjoy the nature and you enjoy the scenery. But what is it? There are people and uh, their culture is different. Your culture is different. Their language is different. Their dress pattern is different. Their food habits are different. So, whenever we are at a new place, what to learn? By interacting with the people, we can learn a lot more. The culture and the environment. Not only interacting with the people, you will also interact with the, the environment. So, you get maximum benefit out of your visit of a new destination. How to measure the level of tourist satisfaction in this regard? How to measure? Yes, somebody says that, no, this short trip, I am not at all satisfied. I want uh, to stay furthermore. But the travel agent packed in such a narrow uh, time, narrow time that is um, within two days, he has shown us 10 destinations. It is not at all possible for me so i want to go as backpacker myself i will plan and um, take a tour stay where i want eat what i want and uh, interact with the local people collect the maximum data and come back then i get maximum satisfaction let us discuss on the importance of travel motivations there is a question that uh, even travel motivations bear some significance. Yes, lot of significance is there. We will discuss in the current uh, slide. In order to market the tourism products successfully, service providers should understand tourist motivation. Otherwise, service providers and uh, if I want to take a tour to Himalayas, there should be people or service providers who will uh, give me information, who will train me how to trek, then who will provide me the equipment that I need for mountaineering. So this is what we call, unless until they know the motivations of the tourists, they cannot be successful travel suppliers. Such travel motivation studies include consumer motivation. Yes, I am a consumer as a tourist. What is that I am consuming? I am consuming the beauty of the nature. I am consuming the ex uh, expanse of a water body. I am uh, consuming the beautitude of a temple tower at Madurai. And I am also consuming the wonderful God's gifted birds, rare birds. So, it all depends upon the motivation of a tourist as a consumer. Tourist is a consumer. Next one is decision making. Who will take a decision? Ultimate uh, decision making will be taken by the tourist himself. Sometimes he will be prompted by his friends. Sometimes he will read a newspaper. Sometimes an article will uh, push him to yes, this thing. And sometimes even a press clipping will also push him to a destination. So, decision making has to be made by the tourist himself. This is very, very, very important. The factors may be many. Decision taking depends upon the discrimination of the tourist. Product satisfaction. As we have explained a little earlier, there should be some satisfaction unless you need not as a tourist waste your money waste your time. So, beforehand you take a travel or during the travel plan, you should ascertain what is the time going to get. Does it uh, offer satisfaction for me by this trip? Then only you take a decision. Overall acceptability of holiday experiences, sometimes only for only one, that is as an observer of golf course as an observer of a particular sport or event may not yield maximum satisfaction. So, you need to again ascertain the overall acceptability of holiday experiences in plural. This is very very important. Pleasure in the vacation environment. Why do you go?
just for pleasure just for happiness just for our own uh, satisfaction henceforth we take uh, holidays for leisure trips interaction with the local people it has been dealt very clearly in, in, in a little bit earlier there are different uh, motivations which prompt the travelers to move from one place to other among the, all these travel motivations the very first one is vfr what is vfr vfr is visiting friends and relatives yes during your vacation as a student uh, some of your friends who is staying in mumbai and you are located uh, in chennai and he simply writes or gives you a ring and why can't you come for your vacation to mumbai i will show you whole lot of things in and around mumbai that is what we call yes then you take a decision go to him he is your friend you stay with him and other thing is relatives some of your relatives might be staying elsewhere in some parts of uh, india or the world they may also invite you please come stay with us spend your vacation here we organize everything for your trip no botheration for expenses and we are well informed of our tourism destinations they they are really wonderful things then you will take a decision yes this time i would like to go to australia i would like to visit gold coast i would like to visit kangaru island like that there are new experiences new places new things and you will interact with the local people so this is one visiting friends and visiting relatives you stay with them but you move out of from the uh, residences of your friends and relatives so that you will take up the travel and tourism activity visiting friends and relatives is an important motivation for travel because tourist will have someone to stay with this is economical you need not to pay anything for hotels or lodges you need not to pay for food you need not even pay for transport so he will be acting as your escort tourist guide and what we call a man who takes care whether he may be friend or a relative an advantage of the vfr is that the tourist knows about the culture of the destination he or she stays along with the friends and relatives as i said earlier your visit to australia will give you ample scope in understanding the uh, coral reef and the beach front and the local cultures and what we call the aboriginal tribes of australia including the kangaroo island and the ayer rock etc all are new things you will definitely interact with the people you know the local culture so this is the advantage of visiting friends and relatives ultimately you are becoming from friend from relative to tourist there are many such motivations that push the travelers to different places one such is even travel what is the event to travel there will be many events one event uh, i can give you as an example that is kumbh mela or ardha kumbh mela godavari mahapushkar or there may be some other event what we call asian games or national games or olympic games so these all are called as events occur somewhere sometime throughout the world so this is another important motive or motivational factor that uh, uh the tourist will be taking to new places even travel is visiting a destination with the prime motto of participating in an event such as the london 2012 olympics or the 2014 brazil fifa world cup it may include other activities like attending a music festival or a city tour at the same time advantage is that the tourist will have 
a chance to meet thousands of people or he can see a oh, whole lot of people gathered at one place from different countries, different continents, different islands at one place and share the common interest at a destination. What is the common interest? That is enjoying the music concert. You are one from India. He may be one from Australia. The other uh, lady may be one from Africa. Like that at one place the a real sense of sharing common interests happen. Leisure travel is another thing. Leisure is another motive. What is leisure? If you get vacation or if you get weekends, then how to spend them? We simply uh, keeping in our residences is okay for many days. But sometimes for a few days, you want to take a travel to leisure as a pursuit to uh, places and those places may be in variety. We cannot uh, confine only to particular destination you spend your leisure. It all depends upon your the desire, your desire, demand, and uh, your own wish to see those places. A tourist looks for the pleasure, recreation, and escape from everyday life. Leisure travelers usually prefer to travel to beaches hill stations, mountains and other natural areas in general. But nowadays the trend has changed. Different people have different motivations and different uh, destinations are available, different activities are available. Now we are simply moving out from this uh, small frame to a widened base of worldwide destinations. It involves a wide range of Outdoor activities like shopping. Yes, why can't? When you are there in a leisure pursuit or purpose, you nobody prevents you shopping a local handicraft, shopping some food items, shopping your uh, clothes. You can go on shopping. Sunbath is again the 4S is there or 3S is there. Sun, sand, sea and sex is uh, one form of uh, tourism in the western countries restricted to a few areas and you can also simply take a sun bath to get your skin tan then golf at a very few places you get golf courses uh, whether it is a nine hold one or an 18 hold one but uh, a man who has got little interest in participating the golf activity or in observing from outside the golf course many people will be observing from outside so you can also enjoy golfing skiing skiing is different it is an adventure type of activity unless until you get uh, trained in that particular skill uh, you cannot take so these are some of the things that we want to um, explain in leisure travel and leisure as a motivational factor. Another motivation is business. Most of the people who transact business confine only to their business, their offices, their factories, their shops, their restaurants, etc. Nowadays what happens is business becomes through supply chain management or through the process of globalization now, business meets are not done at a particular small locality. Now, uh, you take uh, dealers, some dealers of a particular business. The whole lot of uh, uh, dealers and a dealership network wants to meet at one place, not in India, elsewhere outside. So, throughout the world, most of the dealers will congregate, discuss, then take a trip. This is what we call is business as a travel motivation. Now, we will go into the uh, academic aspect of the business travel. It includes traveling for a business purpose where the tourist enjoys local sightseeing through the incentive trips offered by the companies for its employees. This type of tourism is termed as MICE, which includes attending meetings incentives, conferences and exhibitions. So Hyderabad HICC is the best example. Hitex is the best example for such a business meetings where 
टेन थाउजेंड बिजनेस पीपल कैन ट्रांजैक्ट देर डिलिबरेशन सेट वन प्लेस दिस इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट नवे डेज यस ओ डू वे हैव अवर बिजनेस मीटिंग इन कोलकाता यस आई एम रेडी यस आई एम रेडी बिकॉज इन कलकत्ता आफ्टर अवर मीटिंग जो आई वॉन्ट टू सी द प्लेसेस इन एंड अराउंड कोलकाता एडवेंचर is another factor what is adventure we say that uh, uh, some people resort only few things some people go beyond that beyond that involves risk so in adventure tourism there is a lot of uh, risk bearing factor unless until you are ready to bear it uh, physically you cannot take an adventure trip adventure is another motivation factor for to a limited people or limited uh, tourists to take adventure travel or adventure tourism activities traveling to a natural environment or remote location with a purpose of active participation with risk to explore a new experience such as mountaineering trekking bungee jumping mountain biking rafting jeep uh, lining and uh, rock climbing these are some of the activities that uh, you will take during your adventure trip religious and spiritual based travel yes it is very very important india is known as a uh, cultural center a religious center a spiritual center so most of the westerners you might be seeing Do they they would visit uh, india for two purposes one to appreciate uh, the heritage one another to appreciate the cultural mosaic every state has its own culture so cultural mosaic and important other factor lies in spirituality a until a few years ago most of the westerners in thousands in number visited puttaparthi very close to Anant- anantapur and uh, bengaluru they would like to visit that uh, puttaparthi sai baba's ashram they stay sometimes a week sometimes months together and they repeat uh, six months once in six months one twice in a year like that so this what happens is what is that they are getting they are getting mental solace they are getting problems for their um, um, what we call some problems so ultimately they want to listen what the spiritual gurus say so this is known as spiritual tourism visiting places where spiritual leaders stay uh, only to meet them seek their suggestions for mental solace and also to listen to their wonderful lectures on the other hand pilgrimage is another aspect ever since at the during uh, the 6th century bc when vardhaman mahavir and uh, gautam buddha gave discourses in northern india and uh, the places they were associated with became pilgrimage centers right from the second third third centuries bc you all know that asoka the great mauryan emperor visited eight important pilgrimage places associated with lord buddha similarly we also have many number of places associated with the story of mahabharat the story of ramayan the story of bhagavat so all those places become holy places we call them as punya kshetras and teerth kshetras nowadays india is known as a land of spirituality as a land of pilgrimage tourism henceforth travel for pilgrimage and uh, spirituality is purely dependent upon the motivation of getting spirituality involving in spirituality and taking a pilgrimage tour people with a stronger belief in their religions travel to fulfill their spiritual needs this type of travel was the basic reason for the development of travel industry in the medieval period you take uh, thomas cook he for the first time arranged a tour to a 
religious place. So that is the root cause for the development of pilgrimage tourism, spiritual tourism and uh, uh, other forms of tourism. This is the basic uh, um, area where we could uh, spend some time on discussing furthermore in the next uh, modules. We have examined that there are many motivations to pull the travelers to different uh, types of destinations. Ultimately, they resulted into offering varieties of tourism farms. So that is uh, the very important uh, significant factor in travel motivations lesson. There are certain theories propounded by academicians in the field who worked uh, many, many years on these uh, areas and proposed their models among which we can say leap year model of tourism system, Platt's theory of travel motivations, push and pull theory of motivation. There are several theories in tourism to understand the motivation of tourists to take part in travel and tourism among which uh, the three that I have mentioned just now are very significant to examine in detail. The first one is Lipia who proposed his own model that is called tourism system. What is it? Neil Lipia suggested a model in 1979 and updated it in 1990 which was adopted by the tourism academicians. This model shows how tourism grows between tourist origin to destination. There are three elements in the model namely the human element, the geographical element and the element of transit route. Please uh, see the figure or what we can call the illustration in which it is clearly explained. Traveler generating region that is where actually the tourists are there. They want to take a tour but they are there. Then they will depart to a destination. During the travel until he reach the destination what we call is a transit route region and uh, he will reach the destination go for sightseeing and he will enjoy the environment that is human social cultural economical technological physical political legal etc finally after finishing his uh, trip he wants to return to his place of origin that is his own native place or native city so this is very clearly explained by Lipio and it has got its own significance in uh, tourism studies to understand what uh, tourism system is, how it operates. The human element is, the tourist represents the human element in the tourism system unless until there is a tourist, no tourism system operates. Tourists are the real consumers and contribute for every economic activity. Yes, they consume um, varieties of things for which they pay in terms of money and that money will again be flowed to uh, different different uh, uh, people who offer varieties of services. Tour transit route region. The path which links a tourist generating region and a destination is called as a tour transit region. This may include stopover or transit points for the convenience of the journey. Sometimes we may take a straight away journey or sometimes we may halt for a little while or for a day in between. So this is what we call is stopover in transit to region. The geographical element it is very 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 important that unless until there is a specific attraction whether it may be environment, culture or a monument or a site nobody will go. So it is part of the local geography. Tourist generating region, it is the basic market of tourism industry where potential customers are available. The push factors of the destination make it a potential market and destination region could be understood in terms of which attracts tourists for a temporary stay. The attractions are those factors which lack in the tourist generating regions which act as the full factors. Yes, if I have the beautiful Taj monument in my own city, no need to go and visit Taj Mahal elsewhere. Similarly, uh, a tourist who is residing in Chennai would definitely go to see Taj because Taj is located elsewhere, not located in his own geographical region. 
Now we will examine another theory called Planck's theory of travel motivation. Tourism is an intangible system since the goods and services provided to the tourists offer the experience according to Planck. The psychology and expectations of the tourists may vary from person to person. In 1972, Dr. Stanley C. Planck provided a framework to analyze tourist behavior. Henceforth, it is called as Planck's theory of travel motivation. And he classified the people or the travelers as psychocentrics, allocentrics, and midcentrics. Who are allocentric uh, people or travelers? They are sociable, they are informal, and self confident. They seek adventure and an enthusiasm to get as far as and uh, experiment with life. The booming number of new age travelers mostly belong to this category. These people always look for new destinations and thus they are labeled in industry as wanderers. Psychocentric individuals who concern a lot about uh, even small problems of life know what happens if I travel, take a bus, in between, if I meet an accident, what happens? Like that. There are travelers. In travel also, they select such destinations which are safer and often taking many returns. These tourists are mostly inward looking and not interested in adventure activities as they take a lot of returns in the state, call them as repeaters. Mid-centric. This is very interesting. Most of the travelers do not go to the extreme of both allocentric and uh, psychocentric behavior. Travelers who do not fall in both these categories are called as mid-centric. They do not have much psychological preferences on destinations. Yes, just like that. They can go to any place that they want. There are no particular this thing. Very interesting. The third theory that now we, we will discuss is push and pull theory of motivation. What is push and what is pull? You all know that push and pull trains are introduced. That is from one small destination to another destination. The same engine it uh, pulls and again it pushes back. This is the very simple concept of push and pull factors in tourism. The concepts of push and pull factors are commonly used in the context of travel motives. These factors motivate people to move out of their usual environment and uh, pull him towards a specific destination. Every tourist destination try to be filled up with pull factors to attract maximum tourists. Most uh, push factors are intrinsic motivators such as the desire for escape, rest and relaxation, prestige, health and fitness adventure and social interaction. Here, the word prestige denotes that only a few people can take what we call architect tourism, Antarctic tourism, golf tourism, which are very, very expensive or what we call lunar tourism, visiting moon, exclusively taking a spacecraft. It is very, 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 very expensive. So, the prestige place great and dominant role they don't mind even to spend millions of rupees for a single trip push and pull theory of motivation is explained in clear terms that uh, the push factors as far as psychological factors are concerned the motivations include escape is the motivation trust and relaxation prestige health and fitness adventure social interaction benefits interest self-esteem on the other hand pull factors Destination attributes, the characteristics of the destination and types of facilities that are available and the knowledge that they offer to the tourists. Climate. Oh, in summer, most of the people would like to spend their time in hill stations. Historical sites. To appreciate uh, the history of the people. Then scenic beauty. The most enchanting and uh, um, beautiful Sceneries are there, so we go and see. Sunshine. In many countries, what happens was sunshine is not uh, available in its full uh, extent as available in some of the tropical countries. So they go there. Beaches. 
snow, cultural events, recreation opportunities, benefit expectations, maximum benefits. On the next uh, diagram, we see socio-economic and demographic factors are also there. Age, yes, uh, I, in my 60s, second year, I cannot take uh, an adventure travel which needs to bear a lot of risk and uh, physical um, preparedness for me. Similarly, age is very, very important thing, gender. So, gender is um, sometimes women, they take a particular type of tour, men can take uh, other type of tour, income, it all depends upon the income that you generate and you keep uh, some disposable amount for a rule. Education, yes, what is that we are learning by visiting these people, places, etc. Family life cycle, yes. My daughter is located elsewhere. I would like to go and spend along with my family members. So this what we call is uh, on a regular basis we don't visit. If there is a family cycle related that is a marriage of my daughter's daughter or such a great event, we all will go there spend. This is called as family life cycle event. Rare ethnic groups like aboriginals, occupations, some people have specialized skills where they are exhibited locally. For example, handicrafts at uh, a particular region, only one type of handicraft will be produced. People would go there, see the demonstration by the artisans and purchase something. This is what we call occupation. Second, home ownership. Nowadays, you all know that uh, um, Mahindra holidays and uh, many resorts are available where you can go uh, share the accommodation, spend some time like that. Then market knowledge. Market knowledge, what is market knowledge? If you go there, if, if you go there, what is that I am getting? Yes, what is that I can pack for myself uh, for my return? Dubai. Dubai main shopping festival is there. Dubai shopping, you get all electronic goods and the gold, etc., whatever uh, um, the good you want in you at your own place. But uh, Dubai Shopping Festival is one such a great event where n number of products, whether it is electrical, electronical, or whatever it may be, are available at a single spot. So this is another important motivational factor which really push the people. Then another uh, area of pulling factors accessibility and uh, marketed marketed image what is accessibility easy accessible oh we can go there in some terrorist uh, uh, countries we don't want to take risk of visiting so accessibility is you get all modes of transport then image brand image oh spain yes a wonderful country i will go london a wonderful city i will go like that that is what we call market image image of the destination in the market Perceptions. Some people have some perceptions that no, 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 I will not go to Kashmir because it is infested with the terrorists. It is a wrong notion. Then sometimes wrong notions will affect uh, tourism in a very, very bad way. Expectations. I expect, oh, if I go there, I get maximum and uh, uh, gold at a very, very cheaper rate. How? Bullion market is one and the same throughout the world. How will you get? So, these expectations are also depend upon the personal perceptions, the personal knowledge of the tourist. Form negative or positive destinations. Expectations will lead to form a negative image. Now, I don't want to visit um, that particular area because only a few um, set of people live. No. I hate that people. In tourism, we should be secular in our um, thinking. We should love each and every citizen of the world. Every tourist is a citizen belonging to different cultures, different nations, different races. Then why do you hate? If you start hating, others also start hating. So there is no place for hatred, no place for misunderstanding in tourism. And uh, for a tourist, the entire globe is a one place for a tourist every citizen of the world is his friend similarly we should have all the positive 
um, images on destinations. Quality of services, it all depends. If you want to repeat or if you take the um, word of mouth from your friend that, oh, if I go there, will the services are up to mark, are standard? Yes, they are wonderful. I experience that people are very good. Mm, yes, you can go like that. Quality of services is another pulling factor. Quality of facilities. What facility? Yes, um, the facilities are not as for my expectations, but the facilities are more, more than my expectations. These, this is the difference. So these are the uh, nitty gritty things of push and full theory of motivation. Now, I think uh, my dear students, you might have understood what uh, the um, travel motivations are, then the significance of travel motivation and then there are certain theories proposed by academicians um, by collecting data. Then finally we examined, yes, what are those push factors and full factors, finally the tourist will be drawn and pushed to varieties of destinations. After learning push and full factors of uh, the travelers as motivational factors. Now we will learn factors contributing for travel decision. Change in lifestyle and high amount of disposable income. This is very, very, very important. What happens is traveling becomes a part of lifestyle as a break from the daily routine. Weekend trips are becoming a necessity for the urban people which contribute a huge growth in domestic uh, tourist sector. Incentivize travel. This is again uh, the mice, M-I-C-E, mice has been explained uh, a little bit earlier. Incentivize travel means most of the companies are offering a lot of incentives through arranging trips to their employees as part of their training and motivation. This is a very quickly growing segment in travel industry. Technology also triggers its own factors for prompting, promoting or uh, taking a proper decision by the tourist where to go, what to spend, what to see, etc. Simply sitting in their places of residence because nowadays the IT, information technology, is uh, really facilitating the travelers. You can take a decision within quick span of time. You just open your computer, go to different websites, etc. Then have a click, book a ticket. Economic capacity. As the economy of a country or a region develops the tourism industry and also motivates a number of travelers for visiting destination, poor countries do not have wonderful destinations and the airports will be very, very poor in their amenities and facilities. But countries like China and America, you can see how their destinations are, how their airports are, how their other uh, uh, hotels, restaurants are. So money matters everywhere. In this context, we can also say that India is now emerging as one of the economic powers and uh, has been gearing up its infrastructure facilities to suit to the demands of the Western and elite uh, tourists. So that we are also on par with uh, the Westerners and now we are in one of the top 10 tourism destinations of the world. Next factor is sex, age and physical conditions. This is very, very important. Uh, look at uh, the image on the top that what we call is the geriatric tourism. They cannot afford to physically move uh, in the destinations where they do not have otherwise facilities to take them through battery cars, etc. So they confine only to one area, limited uh, uh, what we call is constraints for their travel like other aged people and uh, you can also see the bottom most uh, slide or image which gives oh they are enjoying they are playing with uh, each other so the age is the important uh, factor for taking a decision to take a tour to a place to conclude this module, I once again recapitulate what has been taught in this class. 
most of the tourists would like to move out of their places of residence to new areas based on their demand of the urge or the want of visiting new places because they have seen everything in their place of residence and these are known as motivational factors. The demands turn into motivations. Motivations further become push factors and again they will take a decision and that decision will result into action. The action is the tourist at a destination enjoying the scenic beauty or participating in activity. This is what we call the tourism system explained in the leap year model. Next, there are certain motivational theories include leap year, plot and push and pull factors. Then we have also examined the push factors, full factors, demography and other sociological aspects. Finally, we conclude this session with that unless until there are certain motivations in the tourists, a decision for travel will not happen. Thank you.